Hello everyone. Welcome to the MOOC course on dams and hydraulic structures. So in previous videos, just we have gone through the what is the overview of the course and also the introductory part of the dams and hydraulic structures. So today we will go through the the remaining topics which we need to cover under the dams and hydraulic structures. So first we will go through the the contents that we need to cover under this course that is the introduction, definition of the dam, factors governing the selection of the dam, different, term, different terms related to dams, selection of the dam site and also the classification of the dams based on its purpose, project, hydraulic action, structural action, then the major difference between the small dams and large dams and finally we need to study about the dam safety and instrumentation. So let us start the definition of the dam. So in an easy way the meaning of dam is a solid barrier, barrier constructed at a suitable location across a river valley to store the flowing water. So the different objective of the dam is to store the water for different purposes that is for irrigation purpose, for domestic consumption purpose, for generation of the electricity and for navigational facilities and for other condition utilization that is for fisheries. So next we will go through the the different factors which will govern the selection of the type of the dam. So there are n number of factors that will govern the selection of the dam. So some of our availability of the water, then the type of foundation that we need to provide for the dam, uh, dam construction and also for less losses, topography, environmental conditions, land acquisition, earthquake, spillway size and location, availability of materials and for other factors that can be considered in terms of cost of construction and maintenance. So these are the some of the factors which will govern the selection of the dam site. So the next the very important terms so that we need to correlate it with the dam. So that is the it starts basically with the dam. So it is already we have discussed the definition of the dam. So the an obstruction that is the built on a stream or a river to collect the water behind it. So that we are calling as the dam. So it is a term that we need to use under the different types of the dams. So next one will be the reservoir. So it is an artificial seasonal or the permanent lake that is created at the upstream side and it is used for different purposes for drinking and land reclamation, electricity generation. So based on the different objective that we need to use the reservoir. So the next one will be the catchment. So the action of the collection of the water, especially the collection of the rainfall over a natural drainage area. So that we are calling as the catchment. And the next term will be the, the gorge. So here you can see in the diagram. So that is a narrow valley between hills or the mountains, typically with the steep rocky walls and a stream running through it. So that we are calling as gorge. So the next term will be the width of the dam. So that we already know it is measured along the dam or the foundation interface. So that we are calling as the width of the dam. So the next term will be the heel and toe. So the meaning of heel will be the contact of the dam with the ground on the upstream side and the toe will be the contact of the dam on the downstream side. And the major part so that we need to take care about the heel and toe in the cross sectional uh, figure. So that we will study later. So the next term will be the abutment. So the sides of the valley on which the structure of the dam rest or end support of the dam. So that we are calling as the abutment and next topic will be the that is the gallery. So it is a small room like structure left within the dam for checking the various operations. So that we are calling as galleries and the next term will be the diversion tunnel. So the tunnels are usually provided before the construction of the dam for different purposes. So the main purpose is to help in keeping the riverbed dry condition. So it helps to construct the dam by providing the diversion tunnel. So the next term that is the economic height of the dam. So in a simple way the meaning of the economic height of, height of dam will be the, the vertical distance from the lowest point of natural ground on the downstream side to the highest part of the dam which would impound the water at which the overall cost of the dam is minimum. So that we are calling as the economic height of the dam next term will be the axis of the dam. So the horizontal center line of a dam in the longitudinal direction that we are calling as the axis of the dam. So another term which will correlate the dam will be the spillway. So it is an arrangement so that we need to provide for removing the excess amount of water towards the downstream side. So that we are calling as the spillway. And the last term that is the sluice way. So it is an opening in the dam near the ground level 
which is used to clear the silt accumulation in the reservoir set so that we are calling as the sluice fee so whatever the terms just we have discussed here you can go through the different terms in the cross section of the dam so here you can see the upstream side downstream side then normal pool level then free board galleries to and hill portion then the spillway portion and location of the galleries in the cross section of the dam and next figure will be the the plan view and also the cross section of the dam so here you can see the width the crest point then down downstream phase so where we can have the access of the dam then the foundation then hill and to here we can easily observe in the cross section figure and also the plan view so the next the major point that we need to discuss in the case of classification of dam based on its purpose so there are there are three major classification based on the purpose first one will be for storage second one will be the, the detention copper it is also called as debris dam and third one will be the diversion or the bear or the barrage so this classification comes under based on the purpose so the next classification is based on the material so here you can say it is a rigid and non rigid dams so those dams which are constructed by using the rigid material like masonry concrete or steel timber so that we can easily call as a rigid dams and those who are constructed with uh, <coughs> earth and rock fill material so that we are calling as the non rigid dams so here also you can see the examples that is a green mountain dam uh, california nagarjuna sagar that is there in india so these are the some of the examples in case of the rigid and non rigid dams so the next classification will be based on the hydraulic action that is the overflow and non overflow dams so next we'll study about the classification of the dams based on the structural action so there are four classification first one will be gravity second one will be embankment third one will be arch and fourth one will be buttress dam okay so the next one will be the classification of the dam based on the size of the project so you can classify the based on the size of the project like minor medium and major so based on its culturable command area hydraulic head and gross storage capacity so based on these terms you can classify the dam based on size of the project so the next the very important topic that is the difference between large dams and small dams so here you can differentiate between the large dams and small dams by considering these points so in case of large dams so we are having the lesser impacts on the rivers but in case of small dams it is the greater so results in some of the amount of negative environmental and economic spillovers but in case of results in negligible amount so in case of small dams and third one will be the provides a sustainable greater storage capacity but in case of small dams provides lesser storage capacity so like this we can differentiate the the large dams and small dams based on these factors so if you see the less water loss due to the evapotranspiration in case of large dams and also in case of small dams we are having the more water loss due to the evapotranspiration so it ensures long term availability and can support nearby small dams in case of large dams so in case of small dams it serves small and immediate water needs so in case of large dams we can provide the height of the dam up to 10 to 15 meter but in case of small dams we need to restrict the height of dam less than 10 meter so this is the major difference between large dams and small dams and the final topic that is the different types of instrument that we need to used in dam so here we are having the different types of instruments for different purposes for foundation stability then for measuring pore pore pressure then settlement and lateral deform deformations foundation deformations and also the variation in stress and temperature uplift pressures ground water pressures then pore water pressures and also the settlement of earth dam and embankments so these are the purpose of the instrument that we need to used under the dam safety and instrumentation so here we can use the joint meters inclinometers then piezometers vibrating wire piezometers and then vbs stress meters and also the porous tube piezometer so these are the some of the instrument that we need to use under the dam safety and instrumentation so based on this uh, lectures that is the week first lecture so we will assign some of the questions that is the mcq types so that you need to solve those questions and if you are having any doubts so you can discuss these topics in our 
डिस्कशन फॉरम थैंक यू